Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemus. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A new government office focused on information takes shape. Also tonight, Middle Road is getting some new colors, red, yellow, and green. And there is hope it will reduce accidents. And the fire department is getting more money than what they asked for. In sports, a new OLEI Sports Complex will usher in a new era for the local sports. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Dad never told me he was afraid of heights. <laughs> but he still climbed to that tree anyway. <laughs> Dad never told me he didn't like my boyfriend. He drove us to prom anyway. Dad never told me he was really shy. He made sure we won the party games anyways. <laughs> Dad never told me that he'd miss me. But his hug took forever anyway. Love you, Dad. The Smoothie of the Month for Gold's Gym, Strawberry Mango Tropicana, priced at just $5.50. It includes non-fat or soy milk, strawberry, banana prepost, strawberries, and mango. 398 calories, 5 grams of fat, 20 grams of protein, 45 grams of carbs. Bring your own cup and save 50 cents. Smoothie of the Month, Gold's Gym, Garapin. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. Half a day to the Wami and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Friday, June 11th, 2021. The majority shareholder of IPI has filed a new declaration in federal court. The interesting thing and something you just don't see is that she has attached all the emails between her representative and the lawyer she wants off the case. This gives an inside look at things that are generally protected by attorney-client privilege. In the filing, Lee Ji Shui, the former chairperson of IPI, says she has submitted all email communication between her representative, Mr. Chi, and her attorney, Juan Lazama, to the court. She says these emails are evidence that she has actively cooperated with the request by the court and says that the plaintiffs are abusing the judicial system and pushing for her to be found in contempt. She also tells the court she does not personally know how to receive email and has never used it. She does use a third-party application to communicate called WeChat on her iPhone, but says that application crashed earlier this year and some of the information was lost. 
The plaintiffs want the electronic data on her phone, and the court has instructed her to turn it in so that a forensic copy can be made by a stateside company. Efforts to collect the electronic data locally were unsuccessful. Included in the email submitted to the court, several requests for payment by attorney Juan Lazama, who says he has not yet been paid. Plaintiffs have been awarded close to $6 million in the Gold Mantis case for injured workers. An executive order from Governor Torres underscores the importance of information. Executive Order 2021-09 establishes a new office under the Department of Finance, named Office of Information Technology. According to Finance Secretary David Atelik, the Office of Information Technology is crucial to protect the government's information and data. You hear about it uh, worldwide in America of cyber threats and cyber attacks and ransomwares that's happening, that's costing millions and millions of dollars to governments and and companies across the world. And we need to ensure that our government, our data, at the Department of Finance especially, as well as other government agencies, that our data of our taxpayers' information, our personal information of, of companies and individuals is strictly protected. Upon the establishment of the office, Governor Ralph Torres has appointed Clifford O'Don as the Chief Information Officer, who is to receive an annual salary exceeding the $65,000 cap set by the Commonwealth Compensation Adjustment Act. O'Don is set to receive $80,000 per annum, which Atelik says is considered a bargain deal. Let's just be mindful and keep in mind, for the new office and its mandates, the average salary for a CIO is $175,000 per annum. And we're only paying uh, our CIO $80,000. That's still, in fact, I'm kind of embarrassed to say that that's what we're paying because um, Mr. Odan is actually worth way more. Atelik describes him as a veteran information technology specialist. He has over 10 years working with uh, Fortune 500 companies, most especially Cisco. And um, he has over 20 uh, highly uh, certified um, certifications. And, and um, of course, he has his IT degree. Another reason of the establishment of this office is to streamline technical processes. And having a, a common standard of of um, both software and hardware purchases, having standards and minimal uh, requirements that can allow us to be in compliance with uh, software licenses and ensuring that um, uh, all these offices uh, have a good internal and external uh, network to ensure that they are able to do their work. The Office of Information Technology will also help the Enterprise Resource Planning System, which will be implemented soon. The government has entered into a, um, an ERP, an Enterprise uh, Resource uh, Program, that is going to transform our government into its processes to be online and streamline and as we call it e-gov or e-government where you can be able to apply for permits uh, apply for renewals of driver's license or business license uh, all online and make the payments all online this office will help ensure that all those goals be carried out properly the cnmi fire department will get more funds than what they asked for in the upcoming fiscal year the House Committee on Ways and Means met with officials from the CNMI Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services on Thursday, part of their series of the budget hearings. DFEMS was represented by Commissioner Dennis Mendiola, who stated they are actually getting more than what was requested for fiscal year 2022. DFEMS requested a budget of $5.7 million, but was informed by the governor that they will get 6.1. The additional funding will be used to cover additional manpower. So we have some vacancies that we never filled, so that will be covering the rest. Mendiola states they have also submitted a request for within grade increase. So we've submitted a within grade increase for everybody that's due for within grade increase. Now that's really just up to 
uh, OPM if there's funding available. DFEMS is also running an academy hoping to recruit 50 more firefighters. More infrastructure projects are in the works for Saipan as officials broke ground for a traffic lights project. The Quartermaster intersection at Beach Road is one of the busiest areas for motorists, and it's also a known hotspot for accidents. Governor Ralph Torres states that with these new traffic lights, it will bring more safety to the area. It really is going to bring in, uh, like what the speaker said, a new uh, safety for all of our motorists. Uh, and it's calling already um, to have this kind of uh, infrastructure here on this side on, on Beach Road. The overall cost for this project is $1.94 million, fully funded by the U.S. Department of Transportation Federal Highway. USA Fanter Corporation received notice to proceed on June 1st and is currently waiting for a few elements before actual construction begins. Well, right now we because have a, we have a process like permitting and uh, material order, you know, all the approvals. That's all we we're working on. Chen states the project is expected to be completed in eight months with more than just a three-way traffic light. It's a traffic light and also the walkway, curb, units, and pave 700 feet of the road. This string of capital improvement projects will continue to launch throughout the year. Last month, officials broke ground for the airport road repair, and next week they expect to hold another ceremony. Next week we'll be doing another groundbreaking for Route 35, I think, uh, from... Uh, Kingfisher uh, to Bird Island and then a week or two after that we will be doing the uh, beach road groundbreaking as well. Coming up once again we bring you another of our Friday Night Jam. One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now, just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about 100 eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. The Tan Su Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The Commonwealth Utilities Corporation would like to inform the general public of an emergency water service interruption. 
Water turned off this morning at Asmatuis, San Roque, Atsugao, and Tanapeg. Residents from that area should expect a water service schedule beginning next week. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, water will be available from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. As for Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays, water will be available for 24 hours. This service interruption is due to the isolation of the water main to minimize water loss. Water operators are also repairing a leak on the 12-inch water main located in front of the Kensington Hotel staff housing. For more information, you may call CUC at 236-4333. Our Friday night musical segment is performed by The Kind down in Chalankanoa. The song is called Lily Koi. Enjoy. One, <laughs> one, two, three, four.
right. Thank you guys. Hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ah, what kind Marianas? The good kind. All right, coming up in sports, let's see. A feature on Saipan's fastest high school student. Should be good. Slow down, sports is next. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. We're in a race whether we know it or not. Build our new normal. Enough of my lips to be out. Let us activate CMI. Tonight's sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas sports fans. Buenos sports fans, the awarding of $21.2 million for a cultural and sports complex uh, by Civic Center is going to be a game changer, but not quite yet. The project will take time. It won't impact the Pacific mini games next summer. It is a long-term investment, the first sports-related grant from the U.S. Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration and part of the administration's vision for the future of tourism and also for families here. At the end of the day, um, you know, all the sports, uh, tourism, cultural, just the health itself. Um, and I know we've been a supporter for sports for the last couple of years with the came of so much uh, disaster. And now seeing um, our sports come back to life, our students, our kids, uh, it makes a big difference in the environment. And it's not just the health that we want to take care of, it's our, it's our sports. It brings uh, so much into it. Um, every other night you pass by uh, up the Capitol Hill, you see families watching softball. Uh, last weekend, um, during on Saturday, you go up to Coker, you see the soccer field, field with all kinds of um, uh, ages. Um, 
daughter plays. So that forces me to go watch. That is a wonderful feeling watching your kids play down there at the OEI Sports Complex, especially when they do well. Like this one student who's done really well. In fact, he's the, the fastest high school student on the island. Let's meet him. Worrying gets you nowhere. If you turn up worrying about how you're going to perform, you've already lost. Train hard, turn up, run your best, and the rest will take care of itself. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Soo Lin Foundation. Eason Tang just finished the 11th grade at a copy Christian Academy. He won the MVB trophy for highest points total in the 2021 McDonald's All Schools Track and Field Championships. He competed in five races, including the 100 meters where he took gold with a 12.12. And he did it without much technique. Uh, starting, I just do like this. Uh, I don't even start professional stuff. <laughs> do you know how technique? Do they teach you that? Uh, no. <laughs> you just get out there and. Yeah, just right. <laughs> look at videos or you like try to oh, come study on, it. Be that. <laughs> Eason runs every day, but his goal isn't athletics, it's academics. Sports, though, very much part of his lifestyle. Uh, my goal? Yeah, what do you want to do after you graduate? Uh, go to college. Oh. Go to college? Uh, and yeah. study what? Study uh, maybe computer science or some physical stuff. Agape Christian School won the last six end-of-the-year island relay races. Eason's been one of the reasons why. You guys get together uh, before the event, and I don't know if it's cheerleading or boosting or confidence or what. Tell what do, we, what do you guys do before the race? All the race way, uh, after we pray for the Lord. Uh. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Soo Lin Foundation. All right, we're going to walk off this show with a walk-off, a walk-off homer. A hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back. It's a game winner. It's a championship winner. The KSPN2 Sports Cup Play of the Week. For the third time in four playoff games, Pelu comes from behind in their final at bat, facing the jaws of death. Charlie Canty's walk-off ding-dong in the bottom of the seventh, even the series at 1-1, and then Peleliu takes game three to win the ship. Winning pitcher Mabel Gringmulis, who also smacks and jacks, won the MVP. Peleliu, the comeback kings, and top player of the week. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Marianas Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Marianas Trekking. Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. All right, today's weather report kind of seemed like a rainy season day today. We're still technically in dry season, but we did get heavy rain here at Capitol Hill. The high temperature was 90 briefly, 82 to low, 72% humidity. Tomorrow, some, some rain showers here and there. Winds out of the east, 5 to 10 miles an hour, high around 89, low 79. Seas are moderate, actually kind of calm, 3 to 4 feet. Sunrise at 546, high tide at 733 in the morning, followed by a low tide in the afternoon at 312. Sunset at 6. 47. We've had some great sunsets this week. Maybe we'll have some more this weekend. And speaking of the weekend, it begins right now. See you back here on Monday. Good night.